Chapter 15 covers a big, giant mix of different hodgepodge things, little things that you have to be aware of that um, can reduce risk and liability to you as a property manager and to your clients, the owners, or to you as the owner if you happen to be doing both roles. The first part of the chapter talks about hiring, and we, we did talk about that, I think, in sufficient detail last week. Although I do want to just mention briefly that it's super important to make sure that the people you hire are qualified and it's possible to obtain background checks on people. I think that is a really good best practice because if you're giving people a ring of keys to some properties and access when the tenants might not be home, um, they can get in the medicine cabinet and look for drugs. Um, there might be kids home alone that kind of thing. Um, if you've got somebody on the sex offender registry or somebody um, that might not be totally trustworthy, it's just a good idea because you can be held liable for that person. The same thing with a contractor you might hire if the person isn't licensed or qualified to do the work and it creates a problem, then you could be liable for that. So uh, the owner can also be liable if the tenant has a claim and typically what happens is they'll sue everybody they can think of, especially the ones that have money or, or insurance. And so that usually means everyone gets named. And then you can spend some time fighting to get out of a lawsuit if you don't have good insurance that will, that will help you with that part of it. So um, just a word to the wise on that. The one thing that, a um, um, couple things in here about emergency preparedness. What do you do if there's something that has happened that is unforeseen? I actually have a true story about this. I was at a conference in downtown Omaha, Nebraska a couple of years ago, and a big storm came up around five o'clock. It just, the trees were sideways, it was hail, it was unbelievable, broken glass everywhere. Uh, come to find out that one of the ladies at the conference who lived about an hour away, her husband called and said all the windows on one side of their house were broken out from this hailstorm. It was really severe. Water was coming in the roof of the hotel. It was an older building, a neat old hotel. And uh, then the fire alarm went off and we could smell smoke and they got that all cleared out. Never did know what that was all about. Came back in and um, finally I went to bed around nine o'clock because I was pooped and at uh, 12 a.m. midnight, the phone rang in my room and, and it was the manager and he said, you need to pack all of your things and evacuate the building now. Be downstairs in 15 minutes, there'll be a bus to take you to a different hotel. At first I thought it was a joke because that doesn't happen. <laughs> and um, I didn't smell smoke, there were no fire alarms going off or anything, didn't really know, but I did as I was told and packed up all my belongings and went downstairs with my suitcase Sure enough, there's everybody down there, and there's school buses out in front. It's pouring down rain. We all get on the school buses, and we went to a hotel across town. Now, mind you, we're supposed to be having a conference at this hotel with about 100 people and food and speakers and all kinds of things for two days. So we were sort of flabbergasted by all of this, but we ended up across town. We all came in. They didn't ask to see our IDs or anything. They just, as we walked in, they handed us a room key, told us what room we were in and said, good night, we'll catch up with you in the morning. We got up in the morning, found out where they had scheduled to have our meeting. There was a full breakfast ready there for us. And we had our meetings at that different hotel for two days. At the end of the second day, the, um, the first hotel said, We'll send cars for you if you want. If you were planning to stay tonight, we'd like to have you back. So some of us were spending another night, so we took him up on the offer and, and went back to the first hotel. And I was talking to the manager a little bit, and I said, I, I just can't even imagine what that must have been like for you. He said, we, had 100, we have 140 rooms in this hotel, and we were sold out. Not an empty room. And he said, and, when, and what happened is, there was a main power line outside the building that was loose and it was whipping and arcing and they were afraid there was going to be a serious fire or a problem and the only time they could fix it was that right then they needed to get it fixed. So they had to evacuate the hotel. And he said, we practice this. We have a plan. We have a book and it says, if we have to evacuate, what do we do? Here's our plan. 
we call this hotel and we make these arrangements and we do and we just go step by step and he said and we rehearse and we practice and you know we never expect it to happen but it did and boy everything just went great and you know the people at the other hotel were super too the manager came in and stayed up all night to to get the room ready for us and to make sure we had breakfast and called in people to help and and um, we just had a great experience, even though it was kind of a good story to tell <laughs> because we all had to get up in the middle of a storm and go somewhere else. But it's a testament to the fact that they were ready. They were ready for some unforeseen circumstance. And I guess that's the message I'd like to leave with you is if you're managing properties for others, it's, it's so important to have your ducks in a row. Who will you call to take care of what kind of problem? What if there's a flood? What if, like what happened in Twin Falls a couple weeks ago, the city water goes out and you don't have any water? What do you do? And um, I just think it's it's um, one of those things where it, it's it's really nice to be prepared and and never never fun to go through one of those emergencies, but but good to be prepared. Uh, the last thing that basically the, the book talks about a little bit is, is keeping your property secure and keeping your tenants safe from crime. Uh, graffiti is, is kind of a, a big problem in a lot of places these days. Um, not always gang tags, but many times it is a gang symbols that you'll see on the back of signs or on buildings. Most important to get that covered up or cleaned up right away because if it's allowed to remain, it um, makes makes things, it emboldens people to continue or increase that kind of behavior. And the same thing with vandalism or broken things. If you don't fix them right away, it looks like you don't care and the property is not maintained and it kind of encourages more, more of that. Hopefully you will never run into a property with a meth lab in it with somebody cooking meth in your house. Um, Breaking Bad notwithstanding, it's um, a pretty serious problem if somebody's been cooking meth in one of your units because you just about darn near have to tear the whole thing out on the inside to get it back cleaned up to where you can rent it out again and it's very expensive. So um, just a word to the wise on that. You don't have to keep somebody in your house that you believe is or that you can prove is, is dealing drugs out of your property or storing drugs on your property. So um, something to think about too. But other than that, um, there's just a lot of stuff in here that in this chapter that not only applies to property managers, but might even you might find helpful yourself as um, just a resident of a unit or a homeowner, just helpful things to uh, to keep in mind for you. Otherwise, have a great week.